Hey guys, thanks a lot for joining in, in on another session at Hexcon 20. I hope you are all having a good time here. Uh, this next topic is something that uh, we, we ourselves are really anticipating to listen to and uh, I have talked to many of our uh, registrants and our speakers and they too would like to know very much about the topic. Of course, you have read the topic. Today we will be discussing about how a transita has dealt with the unprecedented growth during the pandemic. It's not actually just during the pandemic, but I think uh, the team from Transita would be the best people to talk to you about it. So I have with me Janice, Omar and Edward. Uh, so I'll just uh, get over to Janice. I think she would be the best person to talk about uh, Transita. So uh, Janice, can you please tell the audience a bit about uh, Transita? Yes, thank you for the introduction, Amir. Yes, I'm currently the Senior Director of Technology, Business Intelligence and Service Operations at Transita. And you may be asking yourself, what's Transita? Transita is a local company in Puerto Rico. It's the largest non-emergency medical transportation service company with a fleet of over 450 vehicles, including cars, um, wheelchair equipped units and ambulances. We currently have about 23 hubs around the island from where we provide the service to our customers and we have presence in all 78 municipalities of the island of Puerto Rico. We provide transportation service to both the medical and non-medical locations, mostly for dialysis and medical appointments. Currently count with 200 partners and among these um, two, um, among these business partners, and uh, our medical insurances, hospitals, corporate partners, among others, our operation handles about 2,800 daily trips, or about 56,000 trips a month. These are assigned in about 450 routes to, and to 500 drivers around the island. About 80% of our drivers are either paramedics or um, emergency technicians. That's great to hear. So our uh, Transita is the largest uh, non-emergency transportation service provider in Puerto Rico. And uh, it's great to have you guys here. So can you tell the audience a bit about how yeah, Hexnode actually helps you out and how these devices are being used? Sure. The, we have been using Hexnode since 2017. Hexnode is currently installed in all 500 iPads, one per driver. And that's, as I mentioned before, across the island we have, you know, we have presence. And we are currently using Hexnode mostly to define corporate policies or company policies, such as the whitelist you know, they can access to, have access to, um, install applications and configure email accounts remotely, and mostly also to communicate with our drivers either on a daily basis or when we have um, events, major events such as hurricanes or things like that, we, we also do mass communication via hex node to our drivers and of course to monitor our corporate devices. So those are the main um, functions for Hexno in our business. That's great to hear. So I think we can actually go ahead and talk about what everyone is anxiously waiting to be talking about. So uh, before we get, get into the solutions, I think we should first talk about the problems. So what were the problems that Transita faced uh, during the pandemic and even before pandemic? Yes, we we have been having a very unique year as most you know most people and businesses are, um, are worldwide but Transita was no exception right so year 2020 started out with an enormous growth which directly impacted our operations efficiency and service quality levels with our clients and customers so we experienced the introduction of a new service offering for medical advantage clients which pretty much are our main it's our main customer and they were now able to address some social related needs given that their medical insurance company now covered rights to supermarkets, banks, church, you know, and other non-medical related locations. So given that new benefit, 
that uh, resulted in a such a high demand with you know we were we we had a dedicated fleet unlimited rights and the projections for the new volume was even exceeded so we were um, you know getting into service delays customer complaints because we were not able to handle our operations with such high demand and then COVID-19 hit in about you know March time frame here in Puerto Rico so with that regardless COVID we kept our operation going we have a seven day operation we never closed we never fired employees we did have a slowdown given that there were businesses that closed the government closed right as it happened in many other places um, but with the volume decrease we were able now uh, to really see and face the problems uh, we were having right before March Yep, and I think uh, many of, uh, not may, maybe not all of the challenges, but many of these challenges are were also faced by some of the uh, people from the company say I've joined in today. So uh, can you tell us how you looked at, at these challenges? What were the strategies that were formed and how these strategies were implemented? Yes, the slowdown I believe was a much needed time to really rethink the way we did things and the great opportunities we had due to the business crisis we experienced in early 2020. With the March slowdown due to COVID-19, the leadership staff engaged as a team to reevaluate our processes and performance metrics so that we could better manage our now larger operations. There were key opportunities identified and among these, uh, the key opportunities were we needed to outsource our call center. We needed to better manage our calls. There, there was no way we could do it with a small group we, we have had for quite a few years. We also needed to find how to coordinate high volumes of you know, the, the service demand with short periods of time because the inventory was actually um, you know, way too large uh, during the you know, January and February. We also needed to find ways to automate more on route assignments uh, so that we could manage that volume. And there were, you know, other two things, engage more with business partners that would um, be allies with us to provide the transportation service itself. So we created a, a network that we even expanded during this time. And the last thing was to use data, use data to make much, you know, better decisions cross-functionally and engage as a team to really find solutions that would take us out of that crisis. Yeah, uh, so uh, I have heard a lot about the development team here at uh, uh, Transita and uh, we have Omar and Edward from the development team. So first I'd like to ask Omar, I believe, uh, is also uh, um, in, um, uh, involved in the setting up the infrastructure needed for all this. So uh, how was all this handled? How your, was your help desk and infrastructure? structure team supported a new way of working remote with I believe just uh, uh, you had to ensure seven day continuous operation so how was all this handled yes and first of all uh, I have experience in both area in the development area and the infrastructure area and all that need to be like, for example, networkings and all the connection devices. And the challenge was that we need to move uh, over a hundred employees remotely within a week. And we faced some telecommunications problem because all the infrastructure and communication is changing. We got everything outside uh, connecting to our servers versus when we got everything in the office everybody's connected from the office to the computers and all these servers and we need to make uh, VPNs and remote environment configurations, server stabilization, networking traffic and our servers went down often like for, for, for a couple of minutes it was a, 
primary and secondary internet availability problems and we'll fix that very quickly and we we got like to emulate everything that the that the person using the in the office we need to emulate in their home see if the internet in their homes are good enough to handle the remote section and it was very challenging because we have a, our telephone in our telephone system we need to outsource in some some service from other third parties business partner to reroute the calls and configure all this blend of Avaya, VC dials and Amazon Connect to emulate that everything that everybody is still in the office but everybody everything is outside so it was very challenging making all these changes uh, very quickly and very effective because we are seven day continuous operation and within so we got some OSHA regulated questionnaire that we need to ask to every uh, uh, employee in our company uh, every day before they go to work so we need to intercept every punch every software that every employee use we need to intercept that making some changes in the code so if you answer those questions wrong for example if you are with symptoms of covid it doesn't let you go to work it doesn't let you go in and send all these alerts to the supervisor and all that stuff and i think that's pretty much it in my, my, my part and this was like in a weak time frame. So we connect remotely internationally with Guatemala, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Mexico, with the other hubs that are third parties uh, partners we use to slow down all the traffic of the calls we got. I think it's amazing how, how much uh, work you had to do and how, how uh, swift you were with uh, setting up remote servers and everything once the company went remote uh, and uh, dealing with the whole infrastructure part. And uh, I believe uh, Edward was directly involved in uh, the actual development part itself too. So uh, Edward, can you tell me a bit about uh, the software developments and uh, all the problems you have to, uh, had to face? and uh, maybe a bit about yourself too. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, about myself, I currently I am mostly a software developer for Transita, but in the last two decades I have been a professor and also been an IT manager and director of technology for other employers. Uh, I will share with you uh, some examples of how our software development team has been able to contribute to Transita success during these troubled years. But first, uh, I want to give you a little background of our development team. Our team currently uh, consists of five full-time developers. We have a mix of developers with more than 20 years of experience. And we have developers fresh out of college. Our professional backgrounds are, di are di diverse, and so are our preferred technology stacks. But that variation has allowed us to be resourceful. We can work on Windows, on Linux, we can take advantage of different programming languages, uh, ecosystems. Uh, we manage our own servers and databases. We also support other IT areas like help desk, telephony, network, and server management. And yes, we do printers and scanners also. As I mentioned before, uh, and was mentioned before, uh, Transita faced what I summarized as three big periods of challenges from the beginning of this year. Uh, growth before the, pand the pandemic, the pandemic slowdown, and uh, record growth during the pandemic. The whole technology team, and by that I mean help desk, system administration, and software development, was and, and still is crucial to meet these challenges successfully. We are only part of a complete equation, but we are a very important part. I will now describe five, five examples of the problems that those challenges brought that require timely delivery of software projects. 
Some problems required modifications to current applications, but others were built from scratch in less than a month, uh, and some of them in a few days. The first problem I will share with you it was due to the dramatic increase in transportation services. That led us to build a network of partners to which we delegate transports. We needed a way to share with them some of, of our data, and we needed also to get from them the data from the delegated trips. To achieve this, we built a web application through which they can receive information of the delegated trips and assign their own drivers. The application has one interface for the administrative users and another one for the drivers. The driver interface allows them to register the sequence of trip events with location data. This data is stored directly in our database. We could not give them access to the same application as our own drivers because uh, that application enforces very specific business logic that did not apply to our partners and we wanted uh, for them for a simpler experience. The second problem, uh, we had a dramatic increase in call volume that forced Transita to outsource our call center. To make this work, we had to make a limited version of our main application to be able to share it as a remote application to our remote desktop services. We had to create also a web application to allow the third party agents to quickly create pickup notification tickets and new requests for transportation services. They were helping us with that. We also created a lot of backend scripts to automate, uh, for example, uh, pickup ticket management, like closing the tickets once the, there was pickup data uh, in the passenger strip. This reduced the workload of transportation coordinators, uh, leaving them more time to deal with higher priority tasks. Uh, th the third problem, we needed to also manage the increase in complaints and grievances due to the increase of daily trips. To help with this, we created a web application to list all complaint tickets, including the contact information of the affected passengers. This application is used by internal personnel to call the passengers and offer apologies and incentives to continue with our services. The call results are added as additional notes under the complaint ticket. One of the incentives offered are courtesy trip. Uh, to manage them, we created a console application to rapidly register the courtesy trip as normal trips within our system but with some differences as to not confuse them with regular trips. The fourth problem, we need a faster communication with our drivers. To achieve this, we added an internal messaging subsystem to the driver's web application to achieve faster communication and to decrease the phone calls to headquarters. We also added to the driver's application the capability to create tickets limited to common issues the drivers encounter daily again decreasing the need to make phone calls to headquarters. Also, now the driver can report the final disposition of her trips from the same application, a task that, that before was part of the transportation coordinator's responsibilities, uh, and now we were releasing them even more time to jump on more important tasks. The last problem, uh, we needed new leading and lagging indicators per department. Uh, to help our long-term planning and our daily response to fast-changing circumstances. To help with that, we created, with the guidance of managers, the new reports and dashboards to visualize the new metrics for each department. Some of the reports were SQL-based, but others required custom scripts. We also created a web application that I considered the beginning of, a, of an employee's portal with individual performance metrics based on the user that is logged in. Those were examples of some of the more interesting problems our development team has been asked uh, during this year. Uh, by no means a complete list, in fact, is growing by the day. How are we doing it? Well, working remotely has helped a lot. Uh, for most of the developers, this meant less distraction, like no more printer support. There are no worries about contracting COVID from coworkers, it has been easier to dedicate more hours per day to pure development, 
since we eliminated the commute. I will, to, I would like to say that we have less meetings now, but that is not the case. Some days are just meetings, but we know they are important. We are taking also advantage of our strengths. Each of us works on our preferred programming language or framework, the one we are proficient with. Some consider this heterogeneous environment a disadvantage, and it could be for some projects. But for us, it has been the best way to deliver fast solution in these challenging times. Lastly, good old reliable practices, nothing new here. We are reusing code from other projects. I know that one is a no-brainer, but its, its value has been very evident during these times. We also have timely communication with project owners every day, and we have a fast turnar turnaround when errors are reported. Uh, finally, I must say that our developer team has been tremendously important to help Transita to achieve rec uh, record growth during this pandemic with, with fast delivery of projects. However, uh, skills and, group and good practices are not the whole picture. I think that the personal drive of each developer to deliver solutions to these important problems was and still is the bigger factor. And this is also true for the whole technology team, not only the developers. Um, that's all I have to share for now. Thank you. Th that is amazing. Uh, I think the most important thing uh, I see from uh, all this is the passion or drive that each, each person, each employee has in uh, Transita to get over the hurdles that are being thrown at them. And uh, I like the point that Edward pointed out that uh, each developer is working on the code uh, using the language they are proficient in. And I think that's really great. Uh, they are uh, already aware of the uh, language and they are an expert in it and they don't have to learn a new language just to get to build the, uh, the software that they are trying to build. And I think that's a really great point. Uh, and I, I would like to end with uh, one question for you guys. Uh, so you were a bit constrained of time. I won't say a bit. You were very constrained of, on time and everything was happening so fast. So is there anything else that you would do differently if you actually foresee that uh, such uh, incidents are going to happen, what would you do differently next time? Yes, um, Amit, I think overall, looking at the circumstances that we faced, we did pretty well and, you know, did the right thing all throughout, given the circumstances. Now, I would have probably, you know, as uh, responsible for the uh, technology team, probably would have been more strict with uh, which software development to work on because each department or each leader per department was required to make better their existing processes and metrics. You know, this was part of the business strategy plan that we put together, uh, you know, with the leadership team. But, you know, that created a lot of work for the technology team. So the, the department was bombarded with many more requests than needed. And as you mentioned, we really had very short period of time to make quick changes and have quick wins. So probably that, and I have to say, you know, it's been mentioned, we are in high record of growth at, for the company in terms of, you know, coordination volume, service volume. Nonetheless, we are facing, of course, you know, cost related challenges because due to COVID, we cannot, you know, transport two, three, four passengers at a time. It is mostly one at a time. But um, at least, you know, I, I believe the company is strong and we now have to focus on the financial side. And that's, that's basically the case for a lot of businesses. And we have to say, we really execute here and we were able to, to stay where we are at today mostly because of that strategy that was put together and that the technology team was able to execute to enable those plans to you know to come alive and i have to say thank you to omar and edward they were key in in this whole process both of them are excellent at what they do they have an experience 
in, in basically all the areas that um, allowed us to really find solutions, real solutions, and to execute and drive the team as well with them to be able to execute on, on, on these plans. So I, I really have to say thank you to them. And I would like to say thank you to all three of you for being part of this session. This, is, this was a really insightful session and uh, it was really great having you guys over. Uh, so thanks a lot for being here, guys. And uh, to the audience, uh, stay tuned. We have many more se sessions as such coming in, just as exciting as the last one. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay here at HexCon. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.